Movies generally follow a three-act structure that pits a hero against a villain, whether it's Batman and the Joker or Kylo Ren and Rey. When those characters meet and eventually do battle in whichever form that fight takes, it's often the climax of the movie and it's pretty damn important. That said, there are occasions where a hero and villain never have the chance to actually meet on screen. It's a gamble for sure, but in some cases keeping the two main characters at arm's length actually makes their rivalry all the more intoxicating. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 9 best movies where the hero and villain never meet. Number 9. Braveheart Mel Gibson's Braveheart stands as one of the best war movies ever made, even if it does take some liberties with the history of William Wallace and his rebellion. Because he began an uprising that took on the nation of England, Wallace's enemy wasn't the commander of a platoon or anything so small. His enemy was King Edward Longshanks, the man who was responsible for the killing of Wallace's family and the subjugation of the Scottish people. Because of this, in many ways Braveheart actually plays out like a video game, where the hero goes from smaller to larger threats as he makes his way to the final boss. That boss was Longshanks, and while it wouldn't seem likely that Wallace would ever meet Longshanks out on the battlefield, the king did command his forces against Wallace's towards the end of the movie. So a meeting could have happened, but unfortunately Wallace was then betrayed and captured and eventually killed. Number 8. The Truman Show the Truman Show is an interesting addition to this list, as it doesn't feature what many would consider to be a hero-villain paradigm. The movie is primarily a comedy, but it evolves throughout its runtime into a drama where it's clear that Truman Burbank is not only the hero of the story, but he's also the victim. In the movie, Truman was adopted as an infant by a studio, and his entire life was broadcast for the world to see. Through this, Truman became incredibly popular all over the world. But what he didn't know was that he was in a cage, and as his reality came crashing down around him, he began to see the bars and looked for a way out, which brought him into conflict with Kristoff, the creator of The Truman Show. At no point do Kristoff and Truman meet one another, and instead, Kristoff speaks to his star through what can only be described as the booming voice of God. Number 7. The Lord of the Rings Trilogy in Peter Jackson's brilliant adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings trilogy, a young hobbit named Frodo Baggins is tasked with bringing the One Ring to Mount Doom so he can destroy it. Along the way, he meets many allies and enemies, but the primary antagonist is Sauron. At this point, Sauron exists pretty much as a giant fiery eye, where he keeps a watch on Middle-earth. He may not be a corporeal being, but he's there, and should any traveller survive the venture to his dark fortress, they could theoretically meet. This doesn't happen throughout the course of the film trilogy though, as Frodo is far less concerned with meeting his enemy than he is chucking his ring into the fiery depths of Mount Doom. Some might argue that Frodo did meet Sauron when he first put on the ring, but that was more of a mutual awareness thing than a real meeting. Number 6. Mad Max Fury Road the fourth installment of the Mad Max franchise hit theatres in 2015 after climbing its way out of an 18 year sentence in development hell. When a movie is stuck in development for that long, it better come out swinging with a great villain and audiences were not disappointed with a Morton Joe. When the film's hero, the titular Mad Max, is captured by Joe's war boys, he's thrown into turmoil that erupts when Joe's five wives go missing alongside Furiosa. Max gets strapped to the front of a car and through the ensuing chaos, he ends up escaping and joining forces with the women, making him enemy number one as far as Joe was concerned. Up to this point and throughout the rest of the film, Joe and Max never actually meet one another. Joe sent everything he had at Max and Furiosa, but when it finally came time for Joe to meet his maker, that came at the hands of Furiosa and not Max. Number 5. True Romance True Romance is one of Quentin Tarantino's best films, even if he wasn't allowed to direct it. The movie follows the romance of Clarence and Alabama, the latter of whom was a sex worker. During the movie, Clarence goes to her pimp to try and negotiate her release and get her things, which ends in bloodshed, with Clarence grabbing what he thinks is Alabama's belongings on the way out. As it happens, he actually picks up a bag filled with a massive amount of cocaine instead, which is an easy mistake to make. This brings the pair to the attention of the mob's Vincenzo, the primary villain of the film, who follows them across the country to reacquire his lost merchandise. Eventually, Alabama and Clarence set up a sale for the cocaine, but right when everything is looking like it's working out, it all goes to hell. Still, Clarence makes it to the end of the film without even knowing who his nemesis is. Number 4. Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope Back in 1977, George Lucas gave the world Star Wars and movie fandom has never been the same since. 
it's clear that Luke is the hero of the story, obviously, but what isn't clear is who his main enemy happens to be. On the one hand, it's Darth Vader, but on the other, it's Grand Moff Tarkin and the Emperor, who never shows up, preferring to leave his minions to do his bidding. If Darth Vader is meant to be the primary villain in the film, then Luke did manage to see him, though they were separated by a large hangar bay. When Vader killed Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke's yell and blaster fire drew Vader's attention, but they never faced off against one another in person. At the end of the movie, they flew against one another as Luke was attempting to blow up the Death Star, but even then they were interrupted by Han and Chewie in the Millennium Falcon. Number 3. Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan is widely considered by fans to be the best film in the franchise, and the main reason for that has everything to do with the rivalry between Kirk and Khan. The film follows several conflicts between Khan and Kirk, which sees the latter trapped within an asteroid and eventually climaxes with Kirk's Enterprise and Khan's Reliant facing off against one another. Throughout this exchange, the two communicate through view screens and comms, but never come face to face. In many ways, their conflict plays out much like a submarine movie, but seeing as they could teleport and meet in person had they wanted to, it does stand apart. Number 2. From Russia With Love and Thunderball This entry covers two subsequent films in the James Bond franchise, as it took From Russia With Love and Thunderball before James Bond met his nemesis in Anthony Dawson's Blofeld. Beginning in From Russia With Love, Bond finds himself up against Spectre and a ton of its agents. Throughout all of the engagements between Bond and Spectre operatives, the man pulling the strings remains something of a mystery. This continued throughout the film, and when the adventure continued in Thunderball, Bond was met with pretty much the same thing, agents of Spectre, but no Spectre number one. In both films, the hero and villain remained on opposite sides of the fight, but they never had the opportunity to come face to face. Fortunately, this would change when You Only Live Twice made its way to theatres in 1967. Up to that point, Blofeld was partially obscured and remained mostly unseen in the previous films, and it took three movies before the hero actually met the villain, which is rather impressive given the popularity of the franchise. Number 1. The Fifth Element The Fifth Element is a widely beloved sci-fi action flick that was released in 1997. While it could be said that the dark entity that formed into a small planet was the true villain in the film, that would undermine the brilliant performance of Gary Oldman, who took on the role of Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg. Zorg was responsible for carrying out the great evil's wishes. He was the bad guy to Bruce Willis's Corbin Dallas, but they never met. In one scene, Dallas and company walk out of an elevator just as Zorg steps into one, but that's the closest they ever come to interacting properly. Everything and everyone thrown at Dallas and his group was done at the behest of Zorg, but neither character managed to stand before the other, which made the conflict all the more entertaining. So that's our list, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below, are there any great hero villain tales where the hero and villain never actually meet that I missed off here? Let us know in the comments and while you're down there could you give us a like, share, subscribe and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.